Tossing Grenades at Windmills Podcast. Welcome to the Tossing Grenades at Windmills Podcast. This is the fourth in a series called Before the Coup. And today I'm going to talk about passive resistance. Before I talked about hiding, running, and why a coup is coming. I'm going to start with what I think is the most practical advice here. Um, the most likely thing that you will ever probably do is protest. If you listen to my sister series called After the Coup, you will hear me make the case that protesting a totalitarian or fascist regime is pointless. And I'm going to put a dot, dot, dot there, right? The answer is sometimes protesting is useful in a totalitarian regime. Uh, a, if it looks like one is about to happen before it's solidified power. B, if it looks like um, it's approaching the edge, like what's going on in Iran right now is both very courageous and actually making a difference. And C, if you're going to do guerrilla protesting um, to protest for a bit and then move on. Uh, Myanmar in particular has shown this to be very effective. Um, in Myanmar, they will shoot you if you protest, but they, you still see occasional shots for basically flash mob protesters who take a picture of the protest, distribute it on Twitter, and then move on. Um, but make no mistake, if you protest on your own, with your face exposed, and a sign up above your head during a totalitarian regime, you are risking getting arrested or shot. Um... Of course, the coup will be slow moving, probably. Um, DeSantis, if he takes power in uh, January of 2025, because I honestly genuinely don't believe it is Trump. But if it is Trump, it will be much faster. If it's going to be DeSantis, it'll be much worse. Um, long story short, um, here are some basic pieces of advice that are useful for protesting in general. And then I'll get into the specifics of things you might want to do in addition if you're in a totalitarian regime. Right off the bat, wear comfortable clothing. You're going to be walking around. You're going to be outside. You don't know how long. Um, if you are arrested, uh, you might be in that clothing for an even longer period of time. So you want to wear something that is comfortable. If you're going to be outside, make sure it is warm. If, you, if, it's, if it's going to be hot, Make sure that you wear something that's cold. Better yet, bring a backpack with a jacket that lets you switch. Um, very comfortable shoes. Uh, consider getting some of those Dr. Scholl's uh, foot relaxers. I use them at cons sometimes. They're very helpful. Um, bear in mind that I have never protested, full disclosure. Uh, and there are reasons for that, mainly because um, I know that if you protest, that is going to get you... Um, the odds of you being in an FBI or police database drastically increased. Now, at this point, um, I'm 100% sure because of letters I've written to politicians that I still am. But nevertheless, they put you in a separate category. And be aware of that. Um, other pieces of advice that are useful in terms of protesting, based on the research I've done, is um, if you could afford it, get a gas mask. Uh, if you feel that you can, get a burner phone. If you can't get a burner phone, consider simply leaving your phone behind. Um, at a minimum, make sure your phone is in airport mode. Uh, and that, But th honestly, given the sophistication of surveillance technologies at this point, um, and uh, there's this little thing called... Um, they, they have mobile fake cell towers, both the police and the federal government, that can ping your phone, find out who you are, and will reveal all kinds of information. And when you include the Pegasus software about how intrusive this can be, which can be put on your phone without you even realizing it. Um, basically, if you bring your phone, they're going to know a ton about you and the fact that you're there. The only way to be 100% safe is to not have your phone there at all. This, the next best thing is to bring a phone that's a burner phone. Uh, I would personally recommend a flip phone. Uh, they're much cheaper. They're much more primitive technology. There's less stuff it can do, but therefore that also means there's less stuff that it can reveal. But even that isn't 100% safe. 
Um, one potentially low tech solution is to turn your phone off and then wrap a whole bunch of tinfoil around it. That's not going to stop it entirely, but um, tinfoil does actually work to keep out uh, electronic emissions. I do know that I would not personally trust airport mode by itself. I mean, sure, it's a great way of solving power, but um, given the number of manufacturers and carriers that are more than willing to cooperate with law enforcement um, and therefore cooperate with the future regime, um, they could put something on your phone that even if it's in airport mode, if it receives a signal of a certain kind, it can still respond. Now, the manufacturers, of course, would all say that this is impossible, blah, 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 blah. But I, I mean, I, I, don't, I know I don't trust them, um, especially the technology companies. If you want to know why I don't trust the technology companies, um, uh, see the, my podcast podcast series, uh, The Sins of Silicon Valley. Um, if somebody throws a tear gas grenade at you, go low and try and get out as quickly as possible. Uh, hold your breath, but understand you're not going to be able to hold it too long. It's mainly going to be uh, very painful. Do not, unless you have the equivalent of an oven mitt, pick up one of the tear gas grenades because it's going to be really, really freaking hot. If you're going to go hardcore, uh, I believe ballistic riot armor is available, uh, but that's going to be hot, it's going to be heavy, and it's going to make you a target. Um, these days, uh, if you can afford it, uh, bulletproof clothing uh, or a bulletproof riot shield, again, that the latter will make you a target, is not necessarily a bad idea. Um, this is always a good idea, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. Learn to pay attention to your surroundings, right? There are active, boastful, right-wing paramilitaries that take pride in and have actually driven trucks or other vehicles into protesters. Uh, or try and intimidate protesters by bringing a firearm and in, the, in a regime could actively open fire on protesters. Understand that the typical neo-fascism model at this point in both Iran and China and Russia is that most of the people who actually fuck around with protesters are not actually um, government employees. They're either sanctioned paramilitary, unofficially sanctioned paramilitary, or um, official paramilitary. Like in Iran, they have different varieties of paramilitary, uh, the most notorious of which are the Basaji, who I'm sure I pronounced that improperly, who drive around on motorcycles and mow down protesters, right? And they can and will do that in the United States. The Oath Keepers, the Proud Boys, um, the KKK, all kinds of paramilitaries will be involved in any protest that happens now. And the closer they are to seizing power, the more they're going to act like they did on uh, January 6th. Um, cover your face. The more you cover the face, the better. Uh, if you can cover your, the entirety of your face, including your eyes, even better. Uh, change your gait. There is optical software that can read the way you walk. Uh, there's a Monty Python episode called The Ministry of Silly Walks, which can also make it harder to track you. If you have tattoos, cover them up. If you have highly distinctive clothing, you know, a custom t-shirt that your friend made for you, unless it's very specific to just that protest and you've never worn it anywhere else, wear something else, right? A white t-shirt and jeans is going to be a lot harder for uh, people to track down and uh, throw you in prison for than, um, you know, a shirt that says, hi, my name is John Smith and my address is 555 Mulberry Lane. Please call me at ph phone number 555-55555, right? Um, other things that you might find useful. Cell phone charger. They have a lot of them. Uh, some of them, they sometimes they'll sell emergency phone chargers. Uh, have the phone number for your local ACLU or anybody else that the people organizing the protest recommend that you call. You might only get one phone call. Heck, in a protest, in a in totalitarian regime, you might not get any phone call. Um, make sure that somebody knows where you are, somebody you trust, so that if you are thrown in a dark black site uh, and disappeared, 
your loved ones understand what happens to you. Conversely, the opposite of that, do not tell the Republican members of your family, your Republican neighbors, your Republican co-workers, your employer, where you are or what you're doing, right? There are employers in this country that will flat out fire you if you're a Democrat, and they will find a way to do it, and they will definitely do it during a totalitarian regime. Um, take public transportation, if at all possible, right? Uh, traffic will be congested. Uh, consider a flashlight, consider some food, definitely hydrate, bring plenty of water. So if you can bring a backpack, do that, right? A first aid kit might not necessarily be bad, especially if you're trained in first aid. Training in first aid, training in conflict management or conflict resolution. Uh, there are actual classes online about how to both organize and lead and protest effectively. Um, there are people who have, for example, in the Extinction Rebellion in the UK, do a really good job of chaining themselves to things, gluing themselves to things. And at the end of the day, the whole point of the protest is to get attention. And if you don't mind a little jail time to get that attention and it doesn't hurt anyone, then have at it. Um, on the other hand, stupid attention, like the idiots who threw... Uh, tomato sauce and a Van Gogh painting uh, for the climate uh, didn't really help their cause and basically looked like they drank their own urine. Um, that's kind of protesting 101. There's always more you can do. There are much better, much better um, things for that. Um, I would be very suspicious if you are a protester of someone coming up to you who seems very friendly, but very interested in the details about you. In other words, just because somebody's a protester, don't necessarily trust them. The United States government has a history of influencing and entering protest organizations, guaranteed that if it is a large protest against either a state or the federal government, and in many cases cities, there is a law enforcement presence among you. So be careful what you say and who you say it to. Whether this is pro, or sorry, whether this is before or, or post the regime change. Understand that in the regime, the, any safety protocols that the police routinely ignore now will definitely be ignored and they will be empowered to hurt and kill you in any way they want, right? So, in other words, the police get away with stuff now. They will definitely get away with stuff uh, during the uh, regime. So, say you take my advice and you decide you're not going to protest, right? But you still don't really feel like you want to be actively involved in a revolt of some kind. Um, there are other things you can do. At the top of my list, here are three things that I would love for a lot of people to do to help protect themselves and protect other people. Top of the list, find a way and a place to preserve books and movies and artwork, right? Work with your friends and preserve banned books. Make sure that these places are not places that your conservative friends and family know about because one of the things that the Republicans are already doing are banning books. And during the regime, purity culture and the infliction of what is likely Christian nationalism or um, extreme variations that they haven't even thought of themselves yet will happen. Books will be forbidden. Movies will be forbidden. Pieces of art that they find offensive will be forbidden. So finding places where these works can be preserved and wait out the regime is at the top of my list of things that I wish people would do. Um, right now, abortion is illegal in this country. And, well, sorry, illegal in certain states. And there are already people talking about the equivalent of an underground railroad. Um, I think that's a fabulous idea. I really wish that some of our friends in Silicon Valley who were not involved in crypto fascism or um, ill-fated uh, Ready Player One virtual reality uh, things would create a decentralized app to allow 
um, people like uh, women or um, refugees or asylum seekers or people that the regime is eventually going to have a problem with to do the equivalent of Uber and get a ride and then have some place that's the equivalent of where they can stay and where you can sign up for these things. Now, it's true that the FBI can and would infiltrate these things, but there are already, at, you know, if you look at Uber and Lyft, they manage to circumvent local government with no problem. And even the regime uh, is going to only have so much resources and so many people. And if enough people are involved in an underground railroad, it might work. Um, that's not where I'm going to devote my energies, but I think that it could serve a lot of good. One piece of advice, if you are going to be involved in this, even if you're doing it by yourself, again, do not ever mention anything about it or trust in any way, shape or form any member of your family or your friends or your circle who even has the slightest leanings of conservative, unless they renounce the Republican Party now. Do not trust them. Do not trust them with anything that you are planning to do that they could later on report you because they will get fiscal and social rewards for reporting you and they can and will, no matter what you think their dynamic is with you, they will report you. You cannot trust them. Anybody right now who still calls themselves a Republican and has not completely and utterly renounced all things Trump, all things DeSantis, and all things, basically 95% of the Republican Party is not someone you can or should trust. Now, am I telling you you should not be friends with them? No, that's entirely up to you. Um, I still have some friends that identify that way. But I cert certainly am not going to trust them with details about things that might put me or my family or my loved ones at risk. Uh, you know, don't go around boasting on TikTok that, hey... I have this new secret chamber underneath my garage that I can use to help shelter women, right? Trust me, they are watching and they are taking notes. And quietly, there are lists being made even right now about people that they want to round up or harm or terrify and or shoot as soon as they are able to. And for them, that's just the next time there's a Republican president. They don't even they probably won't even wait for the legal justification to be able to have their paramilitaries run. Another thing you should be aware of is that, um, you know, 150 years ago, having, you know, a, a hidden bat cave behind your house where you could hide people would cut it, right? But we live in an era of drones and the drug war, and people much richer and much smarter than you have made tunnels under the border to try and smuggle in drugs, and the FBI will have access to all of these tools so the first thing you should be aware of is that um, the plans for your house are available online. And if you're going to take a room and make it a hidden room, you better do a really good job of it. And one thing you should also be very aware of is the fact that thermal sensors can and are put on drones and cars and that they can look into your house and see heat signature. So if you're going to make a hidden room for refugees, not only do you want it climate, uh, climate controlled so that they can be comfortable, but you need to, if at all possible, get your, get your hands on a thermal sensor and see if it show, lights up like a Christmas tree and they're going to see way too many bodies in a room that doesn't belong there, right? There will be mobile police fans roaming around. For all I know, there probably already are. The other thing you should remember is that the technology available to law enforcement comes from army surplus and military surplus, which is sold to cops at a premium rate. So for example, they have access to drones, they have access to assault rifles, et cetera, et cetera. But the drones in particular, you really need to watch out for because they're gonna have all, they're gonna be very useful to the surveillance state. They're gonna include shotgun microphones that can listen in on your house and hear what you say. Any, any electronic assistant that you have, uh, like a Siri or a Google Nest, or uh, Alexa, and I'm sure all of these companies would say that they will only use them for lawful purposes, but I mean, Amazon already gives tons of ring information to the cops gleefully for free, right? So you should understand that anything you say in your house that is even remotely critical of the regime can and will be used against you. Oh, and by the way, we live in the internet of things. So your computer, your television, your refrigerator can and will be used 
to gather information on you. Uh, China certainly does it. Now, does that mean that you can't still bypass these things? Absolutely. But you need to understand everything you own and everything that you're going to potentially do to help people out. I do think that an underground railroad will be absolutely vital for any kind of passive or active resistance to a totalitarian regime. But you need to understand what you're getting into, and if at all possible, get some experts involved. If you're serious about this, you should be watching home improvement shows and doing research. And, and frankly, um, I would make friends with somebody that is involved with drugs, because um, back in the day when uh, marijuana was considered bad, um, they understood how to distribute all these things in ways that um, will pale to anything you're going to think of on your own. Uh, speaking of which, that brings me to the third thing, which is mindset. You need to understand that if you are resisting the will of a fascist government, in their mind, you're not a patriot. In their mind, you're not a resistor or a revolutionary. You're a terrorist and a criminal. And most of the people in this country until things get very bad for them, are going to think the same thing, right? In other words, for me, the instant the government, the, the Supreme Court declares Moore v. Harper the law of the land, the United States government is no longer legitimate. It's an illegitimate government. But you're not going to see me, you know, um, dressing up in a civil war, uh, you know, reenactment uniform, and uh, declaring myself a sovereign citizen and, 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 you know, all kinds of crazy stuff, the United States government will still be the most powerful military in the face of the earth, and it will have the most powerful uh, law enforcement apparatus in the history of mankind, still even more powerful and more investigatory in its capabilities than anything that the CCP wants, even though the CCP is definitely probably the most sophisticated, integrated self-surveillance network in the history of mankind. But in terms of what the United States government is capable of on top of that, they can do a lot more and intrude a lot less. Um, the main difference is, is, is about control. But the thing is, is that initially they're not going to care about control to the degree that China does because they have buy-in already that, that they don't have to enforce at the point of a gun on many people. Um, other things that you can do to resist passively. You have to understand that um, the government and uh, the military are very sophisticated uh, pieces of, uh, you know, they're, they're machines. Think of them as living organisms. And if you can do anything that fucks with those, uh, at, you know, passively, right, uh, then you slow them down, right? I know in my case, I for one am not going to pay taxes to a government that um, steals the presidency. Now, am I going to not pay taxes uh, when the Supreme Court does it? No, I'll pay my taxes. But if they steal the presidency, um, I'm not going to be in this country. Uh, I think I've, I, if I hadn't mentioned that run is my current strategy, then that's what I'm going to do. And I, I certainly do not intend to pay taxes overseas, and that will get affect my credit rating, and they will try and uh, do liens and all kinds of things. I don't care. I am not going to pay taxes to a fascist government. And right now, the IRS does not have the manpower, if everybody decided they're going to stop paying their taxes, to do anything about it. Now, you can make the argument that they're automatically withheld, and they will be. Sure, well, change your tax filing status to withhold as, mu you know, to withhold as little as possible. And then when it comes to file your taxes... Consider not filing them. Student loans are already dubious enough as it is. Do you want to pay your student loans to a government that's going to use the payments for those loans to buy tanks and bombs to kill its own people? Um, any form of tax whatsoever for a red state should be avoided. And I, just to be clear, I'm not saying don't pay your taxes. As far as I'm concerned, taxes are the cost of civilization. Taxes are not theft. But any money you give a totalitarian fascist regime is money that they're going to use to hurt other people. Uh, and not paying your taxes or trying to pay as little taxes as possible is a very simple thing you can do to cause them problems. 
So let's talk about employment. Right, specifically speaking, the kinds of things that you can do in your job or a job that you could get. Um, if I was young, 19 or 20, and I knew it was coming down the pipeline, which is basically definitely coming down the pipeline, I would consider a job in the military, the FBI, the police. Um, I would get it in a major city. Um, and I would probably, uh, much to my disgust and shame, make myself look like a Republican. And the reason for that is that if I am in a place where they think I'm one of their own and I can cause them problems, so much the better. Now, I want to make anyone listening to this immediately aware that there are consequences for these actions, right? People in countries with repressive regimes, Iran, uh, Russia, China, etc., risk their lives to do these kinds of things, right? There are consequences for standing up to a totalitarian regime. And the thing you have to understand about an American right-wing fascist regime is they're not just going to be brutal, they're going to be cruel, right? That's the point. That's kind of the current Republican ideology. So they're not just going to hurt you, they're going to hurt your family members. So whatever you do, make sure you understand that there will be consequences for that. Now, having said that, right, if you uh, have a critical government job in a fascist regime, you can help the cause by doing your job just badly enough that they don't fire you, but you make things less efficient, right? Things that are supposed to go to one place go to another place. Uh, there are a million ways to do this, I can't even imagine, but the areas that are going to be the potential for the most mayhem, in my opinion, are going to be logistics, right? where guns and ammo are sent, where people are sent, where supplies are sent. Um, if these things are sent to the wrong place, um, then um, you cause problems. And if you can consistently do this and not get fired, even better, right? Um, active law enforcement, of course, has tremendous power, but I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to recommend to anyone to be an active uh, duty frontline police officer or frontline, uh, you know, detective or frontline special agent, simply because of the fact that aside from the very thorough vetting that especially federal agents get, in a fascist regime, you're going to be asked to do things that, well, will make you uncomfortable. They will not be comfortable with you until they have dirt on you, until they ha get you to do something that is compromising that they can use against you if you report on them. Um, this is done now, and if it's done now, there's absolutely no reason to believe that it won't continue to be done by the regime. Um, I think that I can't advocate for anybody to do that. However, if you are young and willing to do anything uh, and, you know, see things ahead of time, then um, understand that you could be invaluable for any kind of resistance or revolution or, frankly, espionage by free countries to try and help the United States like Europe. Um, but understand that um, you will constantly be surrounded by people that want to report you, want to hurt you, will hurt you, and be looking for any sign of disloyalty whatsoever. Doing something like that entirely on your own is really difficult, right? It sounds like a good idea, but, you know, let's say you joined the FBI today in hopes of reporting a fascist regime, right? What happens if the Republicans don't win the White House until 2028? So you've joined a career and an agency that, you know, you think you're enjoying things and you let your guard down, and then six years later, the regime comes on board and you might have told people your actual political affiliations. So it's a lot harder to infiltrate the Republican Party or conspiracies. Hell, 
it's the iron. The other irony is it's entirely possible, albeit not probable, that um, the Democrats in 2024 will finally get their head out of their ass and clean house in the Secret Service, the Department of Homeland Security, and the FBI. I don't. I'm not holding my breath on that. But if you go around pretending to be a Republican fascist in order to get in good with these people, and then there's a there's a purge in the government of fascism, then you're kind of defeating the point. So your mileage may vary on that. Um, Another thing that anyone can do that needs to be done is gather evidence. In Ukraine right now, there are people behind enemy lines. And I'm sorry, yes, Russia is definitely our enemy. They're the enemy of of the entire free world and have been for a number of decades. Um, basically, um, they can, uh, what you can do is record, get paperwork, witness, write down what you witness so that if a legitimate government ever takes over again, we can hold people accountable. Like if you're just a regular citizen trying to hide, but you see things, keep notes, keep records, keep those notes and records very well hidden. But the Nuremberg trials did not happen by themselves, and the United States is not Germany. We, well, we do keep records, and the Republicans are notorious for, um, you know, disclosing the nasty stuff that they want to do. The fact of the matter is that I don't think they're going to be quite as fastidious about record keeping as the Germans were in World War II. But... That doesn't stop people from telling their stories, recording their stories, and especially if you can videotape it, and especially if you can keep it secret, um, you will help bring down the regime, or rather help hold accountable those in the regime that cooperated with it and did things that were crimes against humanity and crimes against decency. I want you to consider the lifestyle of someone deliberately being obnoxious. It's a hobby I have. Um, Sometimes I like to annoy people. It's a character flaw and an extremely useful skill in the right circumstances. And over the years, I've learned to try and only do it at the right times. And your mileage may vary as to what the right time may be. But I want you to consider this. From the perspective of moral authority, once they overturn the state constitutions of purple states and allow corrupt GOP state legislatures to bypass elections and choose electors in the Electoral College to choose a Republican president, the Republican Party loses even the tiny shreds of legitimacy that they have left. The instant the Supreme Court does that, the legitimacy of the 1789 Constitution is gone. It is snuffed. Now, does that mean that all of a sudden the light of heaven is going to shine down and Chuck Norris and Elvis and JFK will come back and anoint the one true king of the United States and suddenly our democracy will happen because the constitution is hanging by a thread and uh, someone will come in on a white horse and save it. No, it does not mean jack or shit as far as real power is concerned. The United States military is still going to recognize Joe Biden as the president of the United States until the constitution says that the new president is uh, to be chosen by the undemocratic electoral college. And because the Supreme Court is constitutional, and because since Marbury versus Madison, we've recognized that the Supreme Court has the ability to interpret the court, and Joe Biden is unlikely to try and fight that with the military, then the odds of a constitutionally, albeit totally illegitimate, president is going to be in place, right? And I'm going to be talking about what more active measures might be if you choose to go that route. But it's a long haul, let me tell you. But that's not what this episode is about. This episode is about passive resistance. This episode is about what you can do to disrupt an illegitimate regime, 
short of killing somebody, right? Or short of violent acts. And my point is, I want you to consider every bad idea you've ever had, even if it's illegal, that does not involve harming another person directly, right? If you've ever looked at, you know, at work and said, gee, if somebody did X, Y, and Z, that would be bad, right? Or, you know, it would be a real shame if we had, you know, four uh, Democratic trucks drive down rush hour in this red city at the worst time for a week in a row, just like they did with those truckers, right? Um, my point is, once they declare war, all bets are off, and you are morally justified in anything that you can think of short of taking their life, because it's a war. You're in a war. They've declared war. Now, understand that you're risking your life. And you should be aware that whatever you do, there are consequences. And once the regime starts, these people are going to be evil and they will be mean and vicious. And your Republican neighbors and many of your independent neighbors that are law and order fetishists who uh, might not understand the ramifications of Moore v. v. Harper, but who somehow naively believe that the they can set things right in the next election in 2028, instead of understanding that they will never get a free and fair election ever again, right? They will report you too, right? So understanding the risks, at the same time, understand the sheer potential and mischief that a single person can do when trying to wreak mayhem on people who are doing bad things, right? You can do things that I can't even think of. Be creative. You'll have a year and a half to think of all of the things that you can do to make life a living hell for MAGA without even having to join any kind of a revolution. Consider... Write down what you can do. Now, don't keep that list where your Republican friends and family can find it. In fact, frankly, I would avoid doing internet searches on your main computer at all. Go to the, go to the public library. Better yet, use a card catalog because everything you do online is tracked. And your best bet is to avoid the, the attention of the federal authorities because if the feds get attention on you, you're fucked. They almost assuredly can and will find out who you are unless you're very, very good at what you do. And by the way, you will have a year and a half to learn how to avoid the attention of the feds, right? Whatever skills you think you can pick up to passively cause mayhem, to passively, benevolently slow down the war machine of the American Reich that will come from a DeSantis or a Trump presidency, do it. Do it because you're totally justified in it. The instant the Supreme Court takes away your vote, you are totally justified. And frankly, in my opinion, if you're a woman after Dobbs, you're totally justified in doing it now. This has been the Tossing Grenades at Windmills podcast. Buy my book, Have Name Will Travel, at Amazon and other markets. RedAnvilCreative.com contains all our podcasts. Copyright 2022. To fight the forces of evil.